In this lesson, we'll continue our view of Math Test 10, Section 4, Calculator Permitted. We're still relatively early in the calculator section. And um, so remember, these questions don't get difficult until like somewhere in the 20s. So just make sure you take advantage of these early questions. All right, we're on problem 10. A researcher surveyed a random sample of students from a large university about how often they see movies using the sample data. The researcher estimated that 23% of the students in the population saw a movie at least once per month. The margin of error for this estimation is 4%. Which of the following is the most appropriate conclusion about all the students at the university based on the given estimate and the margin of error? So we saw a sample question just in the last video. And here, it um, we have some information about the standard of error. So university students, how many movies that they saw per month? And we're told that 23% saw one, at least once a month. But the margin of error is 4%. So if you think about that, so we've got the whole population, which is 100%, and 23%, this is based on the sample saw at least one, but the margin of error, think about the margin of error is sort of like a plus or minus that amount, because it's not perfect, it's just a sample. They're not asking every, question, every uh, student in the population. So plus or minus 4%. So if you really think about with margin of error, if you're adding or subtracting, it's really an eight point range. And so if you went down from 23, it's, nine, it's 19 or up, it's 27. So let's just take a look at the answers. It is unlikely that less than 23% of students see a movie at least once per month. All right. So just a couple of points when you're making conclusions about sample words that you really want to avoid and when you want to you want to select. Don't ever pick what I call extreme choices. So if you saw like always 23% saw a movie or never, never write because you just, it's, it's too extreme. You don't know this is just based on a sample. So this has the word we're looking for. We like likely or unlikely, but less than 23%. No, if this said 19, I think it would be a good choice because that is including the margin of error, but this doesn't include it. And so that's why this is wrong. It's just not accurate. If this were 19, this would be a good choice. At least 23%, but no more than 25 of the students see a movie at least once per month. Again, this is similar to A. It's wrong. It's not at least 23 because the margin of error is 4. It could be 19, and it's, it's greater than 25. It's up to 27 with a margin of error. The researcher is between 19 and 27 percent sure that most students see a movie at least once per month. So here we have the percentages we're looking for, but it's not; these aren't applied correctly. Obviously, it has nothing to do with a confidence um, amount. This is just based on the number of students with the margin of error. It is plausible that the percentage of students who see a movie at least once per month is between 19 and 27 percent. Perfect choice. Another word they use is plausible or likely. These are both words you should be looking for to make conclusions, but never always or, or um, never or most. They're just too extreme. All right, let's take a look at question 11. The table above shows two lists of numbers. Which of the following is a true statement comparing list A and list B? All right, and so if you look at the choices, this has to deal with um, mean and standard deviation. So let's just figure out the mean first to see if the means are the same. So we just add them up and divide by the number of observations. So one, two, three, they, they have they each have six. So let's add up list one. So we have six plus five is 11 and four is 15 and five is 20, so 21. You don't have to figure out the mean, just get the total. You don't have to figure it out because obviously we have six in the other one. So this one has nine and 13 and six is, nine. this has 21 as well. These means are the same. They're both 21 divided by six, which again, you don't have to figure out, but that would be three and a half, right? <laughs> so the means are the same. The means are the same. All right, so we know that C and D are both out because the means are the same. But what about standard deviation? Now, you never have to calculate standard deviation on the test. You just have to know what it means and how to interpret it. And, and basically, standard deviation means when you have a list of observations and you have the mean, but then the other observations, how far are they away from the mean? So if the difference between the other observations is greater, they're, they're more skewed, 
they're more spread out, that's gonna have a higher standard deviation. So you don't have to figure out variance or the square root of variance, which is standard deviation. All you have to know is how clustered they are. So the more clustered, the lower the standard deviation. And so we know the means are the same. And if you look at list A, here we have, so they're all in order, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we know the mean is three and four, and but they're all one away. But then look at this one, which also has the same mean, but we have a three and a two, and then a four and a five. And so think about it, which, you don't have to even figure out which one is greater because the question says of the same or the different, but you see here, they're just, they're more clustered, right? Because this one, the farthest away it gets is a two and a five. They're closer to the mean. This one is more spread out. And so this one has the smaller standard deviation. Again, you don't have to figure it out for this question. You just have to recognize that they're different. And so the answer here is A. The means are the same and standard deviations are different. And we'll do one last question on this page, which is number 12. A book was on sale for 40% off its original price. If the sale of the book was $18, what was the original price of the book? Assume there's no sales tax. This is a concept you, you definitely will appear on the test. You need to solve this efficiently. And this is the percentage question, but they're not giving you the beginning percentage. So if, for example, they said it started at 18 and there was a 40% discount, you would just multiply it by 0.6 or to times 0.4 and subtract it. This is not the same question because we don't know the original amount. That's what the question's asking for, and we're working backwards. And so we know that there was a discount. Okay, there was a 40% discount. And then after the discount, it's $18, but we're gonna go, we're going backwards. And, you know, I know this is a problem solving technique. Some students will say, well, I'll just look at the answers and I'll plug them in. You can do that, but if this is a grid in, you don't have the luxury of that. Um, so I really want you to know how to do this concept. It, it's just going to make it a little bit more efficient. And so whenever you're working backwards with a percentage question, the original amount, the starting value, just think it's always 100%. It's always one. It's the original amount. And then we have a discount. And so we've subtracted from 100%, 40. So this 18 represents 60% or 0.6. And the last step is you always divide. So whatever this percent is a decimal in terms of the original, you always divide. And here we'll just use our calculator because this is the permitted section. You could probably do this in your head, but it's gonna be 18 divided by 0.6, which is 30. If this were an increase, so let's say there was a 40% increase for a tax or whatever reason, then it would be plus 0.4, which would 1.4, and then you would divide 18 by 1.4, but this is not an increase, it's a discount. So the answer here is 30C.